good to be here. Looking forward to it. Mm. I've seen since last time I was here in Atensi, you, you've uh, grown so much in short time. Yeah, we're growing every day now and it's uh, fun, but it's also quite challenging. Yeah. So, so you're up to over over 100 people or something like that? Yeah, we're 150 yeah. Uh, in total. So we're 110 here in the Oslo office and then we're even 40 more in the London office. So and counting every day. Wow. So it's uh, quite intense. Yeah. So, so it's been an exciting journey for, for the company and, 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 and yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's super exciting, but it's also uh, quite challenging to hire mm. so many people mm. and remote yeah. and uh, across the borders. Um, so it's good to have people back at the office and finally meet people, interview people in person and kind of yeah. feel the pre-corona uh, thing again. Yeah. Great. And, and a little bit about you, Annalisa. Uh, so, so you are from Norway. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in a little town of Jøvik, which is in the middle of like eastern uh, Norway, mm -hmm. um, in a small family with a brother and parents and a cat eventually that I forced into the family. Okay. Um, you found the you found the homeless cat and dragged it inside. Or? Yeah, or I actually called my mother, who was uh, dead scared of cats. So, Mom, yeah. uh, I brought a cat home. Can I stay? <laughs> and she was like, uh, "Yes, until tomorrow," because she didn't know, didn't want to put the homeless cat on the on the street. Yeah. And then he stayed for uh, many years, wow. and I've had cats ever since. Yeah. yeah. So you're a cat woman. I'm a cat woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my so, superpower. Yeah. yeah. So so you grew up in Gjøvik and, yeah. and and did you did you have a nice childhood? Uh, yeah, I, I had a really good childhood with um, you know lots of sports and lots of mm. computer games. Yeah. Uh, gadget freak of a dad mm. who brought no. technology into yeah. the home yeah. at a very early age. Yeah. So both myself and my brother got yeah. a computer games i think i was four when my dad wow. brought this like was it atari or something? i don't actually yeah. remember the yeah. the brand of the first thing it was a big consulting connected yeah. to the tv and yeah. with this pong game yeah. uh, you know that is basically two stripes and a and a ball in between oh. yeah. and then we played that and we got computers and mm -hmm. the commodore and the yeah. amiga and yeah. uh, i think uh, getting technology at an early age and also then getting being put in front of the technology at the same mm. um, level as my brother and any other kid yeah. was pretty shaping for me yeah. becoming an engineer and then going into computer games yeah. I see so 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 you became a little bit attacky as we as we call it uh, yeah. at, at, a, at yeah. a young age and and was it a gradual development over to trying to understand the engineering behind uh, the computer games and computers or, or how did it develop? Yeah, I was always very, looking back now, I was very curious on how two things work together, mm -hmm. right? So how was the computer games put together and how yeah. could you... I never sat down and made demos or anything, mm -hmm. but I started programming and kind of early on to internet and exploring the... Both the so, so you dark started Elvis programming uh, at the early age? Yeah. yeah, programming and scripting and... Mm -hmm. Visiting every corner of internet when that yeah. came. Uh, now I feel so stupid. I played so 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 a lot of Mario, but I never won <laughs> what was behind Mario. No, yeah. but I was very good at it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's the most important, yeah. I think. But I came from a very creative family. Yeah. So my mother had this sewing uh, studio, uh, mm -hmm. making lots of stuff, and and the combination of technology and creativity, mm -hmm. I think, is what drove me into being a gamer and wow. then also into computer games and the whole sphere because I mean computer games is so much more than software mm -hmm. and technology right yeah so uh, I played lots of uh, games and dabbled a lot with technology but mm. also had a very spent lots of time on the soccer field so yeah. that was also one of my big yeah. passions throughout childhood so sports and and and, and the tech world yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so w was it then hard to choose a field engineering or, or did it come naturally to you as a choice? Yeah, so it was actually at uh, Vidrigon or at college, mm -hmm. I actually visited one of these early on testers, you know, who did yeah. lots of tests, both like uh, uh, ability tests and creative tests and mm -hmm. personality tests, just because I was 
I felt like I had so many options on, on what to do. Technology mm -hmm. was one, yeah. being more creative, being a goldsmith or like an artist was another. Mm -hmm. So I was really like clueless as of what to do. Yeah. Um, and it didn't help mm -hmm. visiting her because yeah. she said, well, you can be super good in technology and like any abstract logical field mm -hmm. or you're very creative. Yeah. So you can go ahead and be an artist or like mm -hmm. explore that kind of uh, yeah. field as well. Yeah. So it's actually then, uh, yeah. It was a little bit dilemma. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of dilemma. And then one of my parents, can't remember which said, well, you're gonna make more money and have a safer, um, kind of profession if mm -hmm. you move, in, move into technology and, and that way and then yeah. you can always do the creative stuff on the side. Yeah. So I think the sensible parent advice was what pushed me into the direction yeah. of uh, technology. Very nice of you to not name the parent who gave yeah. that advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so keep that a family oh, secret. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good, at least for the, for the next, next Christmas or when the family comes yeah. together. Yeah. Otherwise it might have been brought up. Yeah. It could have, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, so you choose that road and, and, and you then became some years ago CEO of Atensi and you were in the founder team. Tell me a little bit about that journey. Mm -hmm. So after my master's degree in computer science, I had a few years in, in traditional consulting mm -hmm. because I, although I'm a trained programmer, I mm -hmm. thought I'd never worked in the computer gaming business because uh, the best developers are, are in there and I was mm. too impassioned or what do you call it to um, I'm so in utormodig what do you call that in English impatient impatient yeah, yeah. yeah. and like the interaction between people yeah. so I ended up kind of leading developers and being the one connecting dots between business and technology yeah so I when Funcom which is the biggest game developer mm. in Norway looked yeah. for a project manager yeah I was like, that's my cue, yeah. then yeah. I'll, I'll uh, try to get a job there. Yeah, understanding the bigger picture of things. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and then being part of the whole creative and, and te technical process of making a computer game, because mm -hmm. I wanted to, to see how, what that was all about, because yeah. as an end product, that was so fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. And then I started in Funcom. I spent seven years there as yeah. a producer and kind of administrative head, uh, working closely together with the CEO there and mm -hmm. the like senior team. Yeah. So uh, the background from Funcom and the founding team in Atensi actually came from Funcom. Okay. So the CEO in, in Funcom, which yeah. I worked closely with for mm. seven years, then started Atensi. I was in maternity leave at the time. So uh, he called me and said, well, you have to come and see what we're doing at the Tensi because it's pretty awesome. Yeah, he knew you. He, he knew you were going to be fascinated. Yeah, yeah. he knew, mm -hmm. and and it was the the first product of a Tensi was a retail store, mm -hmm. uh, made in 3D with customers coming coming in, and you had to help them. Yeah. And I, my mom had a clothing store when mm -hmm. I grew up, so I worked there as a like uh, part time job uh, all of my upbringing. So being back in a store and then being trained by a computer game and how mm. to help customers. And it was like connecting the dots from, yeah. from what I'd done when I was a young mm. uh, and then taking the whole computer game yeah. knowledge into, into the picture. Yeah, so, so actually, yeah, gamifying education or... or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Well. And then also the visual, the realistic aspect that you yeah. get from a 3D simulation yeah. is quite different and, and strong mm. compared to just uh, going about in the store um, doing your best like uh, with probably some tips and tricks from the from the seniors in mm. the store but then actually getting uh, all the tasks and all the stress level and how do you handle a difficult mm. customer yeah. uh, at a very young age yeah. or a new age mm. so it's so, a so brilliant brilliant way of, of, of teaching yeah, 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 onboarding and teaching mm. and uh, yeah. yeah, so that's good. And how was it then, then when you became involved in Atensi, then you went from this uh, project or senior project manager to, to a CEO, how was that transition of, of, uh, of being a CEO? Yeah, so 
I joined uh, as early employee, number mm -hmm. five, uh, in Natensi. And you know, in a startup, you have different roles. Mm -hmm. So I joined as more of a CTO, like yeah. a technical and also administrative responsible. Mm -hmm. And then Trun, one of the founders and myself, we kind of led the company as a joint dual leadership mm. uh, throughout the eight years now, yeah. switching between roles depending on who had um, different responsibilities. Mm. So where Trun is the, I call him our, our Steve Jobs. He mm -hmm. hates that because yeah. <laughs> he wants to be compared, yeah. but, but he's the visionary. He yeah. has the product vision and the long-term vision for the company and the products. Yeah. And I'm more of the doer. Does he yell at people as well as Steve? Or no, he doesn't. No. And he has socks and uh, shoes and everything. So there's actually nothing to compare ex except that strong product vision, uh, which I think Steve Jobs also was brilliant mm. at. So I'm then more of the doer, the operational uh, person, getting, he also gets things done, but then looking after the accounting, looking after um, mm -hmm. compliance, legal, yeah. contracts, customer projects, all of that in the early days. Mm. Uh, we didn't actually have a CFO until four years ago. Yeah. So uh, we did lots of uh, bare minimum uh, stuff mm -hmm. in, the, in the early days. Yeah. And then actually we've, um, for three years, we were co-CEOs, yeah, okay. which is also quite mm. untraditional yeah, uh, that's interesting. in yeah. any company. Mm. Um, and we changed that again now half a year ago, mm. just before summer. Yeah. Because now with bigger investors, bigger crowd and uh, going into US, which is our ne next big milestone, mm -hmm. clarity and uh, responsibility is easier to communicate, of course, if you have one CEO, mm. one CTO, one COO. Yeah. So then we changed again. Changed again, yeah. yeah. And then you moved from CEO to now CTO again. Yeah, I'm yeah. CTO and COO. Mm. So I have a still a split role yeah. and responsibilities. Yeah. I see. So and and like, uh, uh, what's the difference? What's the, what's the difference in in uh, in life quality or, or work quality in these different roles? Do you Actually, they're quite identical, I say, because as a company, we're quite um concerned about our employees well-being mm -hmm. of course there's great responsibilities and there's like lots of pressure from yeah. both customers and investors but as we still lead the company in such a tight and kind of joint manner i still feel the same kind of pressure mm -hmm. uh, as, as feel CTO. the same responsibility even though the, the title is different. Yeah, yeah yeah i actually mm. do because yeah. that goes just as much into the company and how we deliver stuff to our customers and yeah. build value to the investors mm -hmm. um, and i think also that reflects back to when we've gotten investors into the company the cultural fit and the like almost personality fit mm. with them and us has yeah. been extremely important yeah. So the investors that we now have are, are quite similar to us, both in like view on how to develop the company, but mm -hmm. also in to, to have kind of a very flat hierarchy and a low key kind of uh, approach to mm. things to be, we're not informal because we have extreme responsibilities, but mm. to be able to joke and to be able to, yeah. to have a very loose, conversation mm. and then swap over to the more concrete actionable things yeah. Yeah, so that's been important when yeah. you showed me around here i, I saw your uh, seating it was a little bit in the middle yeah and and it was the same desk as everyone else yeah so uh, so was that a conscious decision yeah i mean being seated in the same room uh, mm. has always been core kind of strategy for us yeah. although people have complained about the noise level and mm. Uh, not being able to kind of shield themselves and, and, and focus. Yeah. But I mean, even now when we're over 100 people being part of the bus, mm -hmm. that's probably the most important thing that I do. Yeah. Uh, and just pick up on things. If I need to, to get a clarification, I walk over and ask. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also sit, take my computer and sit with the different teams and just yeah, yeah. move a bit around. And mm -hmm. people are used to that. So people regard us uh, like any other team member that yeah. can sit and do, do okay. whatever. 
So, yeah. so people don't change if you if you move around. They don't they don't hurt. I hope not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. They behave the same towards yeah. me, but uh, I I hope they don't change at least in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a cultural difference there yeah. as yeah. well between Norway and the UK, for instance, where we have 50 people. Yeah. Where, I think it takes a few hours of of myself and the leadership team from Norway to. Mm explain to them that we are normal people and that the Scandinavian leadership model yeah. actually is quite flat and mm. egalitarian. Yeah. So that uh, I'll join any meeting and then expect you to speak up mm. regardless. Yeah. So, but that's, and I think US, you will find even more of a hierarchy or mm. expectation to that. Yeah. So that's a challenge, mm. of course, yeah. to, uh, to I, work with that. And I know you had um, a special focus on and employers' well-being and and how people are treated and and how they feel at work. Uh, can you can you tell me a little bit about your thoughts about leading people and and when it comes to well-being of, of your staff? Yeah. So I mean, I think there's been a, a big shift in Corona, of course, mm-hmm. or in the COVID period, uh, where we were very concerned and on top of this before Mm -hmm. uh, Corona, but even I think now we have such a young workforce. Our average age is around 30. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lots of people um, might live in a flat alone or uh, don't share uh, apartments with Mm -hmm. anyone. So so to be able to spot everyone um, in Corona when we're working remote has been a big challenge Um, because in the normal work setting you would be able to see okay this guy looks tired mm. two weeks in a row or you yeah. just see you spot that it through on the coffee machine yeah yeah, yeah. you spot mm. things and yeah. you see that something is off should we have a chat mm. to train both for ourselves to be aware but also train all of our people leaders to be very aware and have yeah. very frequent check-ins yeah. so to do one-on-ones every other week mm-hmm. or so and just to be like I think to to tr- almost train people to have that how are things going chat, mm-hmm. not just is that task delayed mm-hmm. kind of chat yeah. is important yeah. because you can always talk about work and how you're mm-hmm. developing and, yeah. and, and delivering, but also to check in on, on the private side, I mm-hmm. think is, is super important. Mm-hmm. And we've had yeah. Yeah, focus on that. Yeah, and you haven't haven't uh, been afraid of, of um, asking about that, how things are going at home, are you okay? That's been a bit natural for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I think the fact that we're doing that mm-hmm. also then trickles down to yeah. the organization. People pick on the culture, they ask their colleague, yeah. how, how are how you, are you doing? doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if someone's in a um, tough phase or yeah. has a tough time, then we've also then helped them to have someone to talk to, go yeah. to a therapist or... Yeah or two that we would cover. Uh, I hope you choose psychologists, not alternative therapists. No, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) We have also psychologists in-house, so they would, yeah. Yeah, Um, that's great. I I knew about that. I I think that was uh, very good that uh, to to see and hear about how much focus was on on the mental health in the company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah. and from your side, uh, as we were talking a little bit about before we started the camera, like uh, um, that running a company, founding team, tech company, a mm. uh, lot of lot of stresses, and, yeah. and people in those positions they're twice more likely to experience uh, mental problems. Yeah. Um, so how has it been for you, like stress wise and and and. Uh, um, um, stress-wise, I think, as any other leader, mm-hmm. um, and when I have two small kids, yeah. also a husband running a startup, yeah. so uh, stress has been high yeah, mm. yeah, in periods. Yeah. Um, and I think then the same that we kind of provision to our, or uh, envision to our team that mm. stress can be high at times, mm. and you can always come and tell us, and yeah. then we will try to... Yeah lower the pressure mm-hmm. uh, of course i've had dialogues with Ron and like the other leaders here when temperature is high mm-hmm. and when you feel that you don't um, uh, deliver on on the targets mm-hmm. we've been as a company in an incredibly fortunate position to mm-hmm. like 
have positive development, strong growth um, over the past year. But then I have the fortunate capability of almost always falling asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like an atom bomb, I think, that wow. could, uh, could crash outside the house yeah. and I would still sleep. So stress doesn't affect your sleep? So Very uh, seldom. Yeah. But if it does, then yeah. I completely freak out. Yeah. But uh, my ability to sleep a lot, yeah. I think, has saved some wow. of the most uh, tough times, yeah. actually. So good sleep has been then important for you. Are there other things you, you've done uh, to, to manage yourself uh, in, in tougher times? Uh, yeah, I think exercise and, and uh, being outdoors mm -hmm. is big thing or big part of my life. Yeah. So being in the woods, uh, yeah. running or walking, being in the mountains. Yeah. And I think some of, something that I've learned over time mm -hmm. uh, that I try to tell every young employee here is that there's almost nothing that important that it can't wait until Monday. Mm -hmm. So if it's Friday afternoon, you're completely ready for the sofa or for the hike or whatever, then mm -hmm. put your PC together and, and yeah. go for a walk or yeah. like take your weekend off. Yeah. Sometimes you would have to yeah. work your way through the weekend or your vacation, but let that be the exceptions. Mm. Not uh, There's no one um, here kind of promoting the 100 hour uh, work week or something no. like that. So mm. being efficient yeah. and then super tough on priorities. Yeah. Uh, it's been yeah, one of my key learnings, yeah. I think, from yeah. from when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. So so you then take some experience or reflection from your private life or, or and also try to implement it in the, in the company. Yeah. yeah. And mm. uh, and I think training and like coaching and, and developing our our employees just starting their mm. career yeah. on on like splitting between what you have to do at work and try to I guess you as psychologists and, uh, and are, are really good at putting the work behind you when you mm. leave the office. Yeah. I think that's just as important mm. if you have an office job or do what yeah. we do. Mm. So that customer yelling at you or the deliverables being delayed. Yeah. Let that be, and mm. then you can pick it up on Monday. Just yeah. don't let it bother you over the weekend. I yeah. think it's it's important. Yeah. Mm. And and you you having uh, having two children and and being in the founding team uh, when they were, were very small uh, must have been tough. Um, did you have any any time where you thought like oh, I've had enough? I wanna I can't do it anymore. I can't I can't juggle these these two roles at the same time? Actually, no. Huh. Um, because the enjoyment and the, and the kind of fun at work mm -hmm. has almost been like a place to go for, for energy. Yeah, of so course. you got a lot of energy even though, um, even yeah. though the deadlines are, are piling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get mm -hmm. lots of energy from the people mm -hmm. I work with and the people that we have around us in Natensi. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie and say that um, I wanted to throw everything like the house, the kids, cats, the husband, everything uh, yeah. uh, and the job uh, out the window and then uh, just have weeks and weeks of walking in the mountain alone. <laughs> but everything is, is, at the end of the day, it's worth it. Yeah. So it again boils down to prioritization. And our yeah. kids, uh, they have been late hours at the office, at events. Yeah. At we bring the, them to the Yeah, to we the bring them and with yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they're probably seeing more meetings and uh, offices than yeah. the average kid. Uh -huh. But I think, okay, if they... If they learn one thing from that is that, okay, hard work mm. comes uh, yeah, throughout yeah. life. Yeah. And then we're being both of us, both me and my husband, super focused that when we have time off, mm -hmm. we're, yes. it's time off. It's time off. You turn off the mobile and you don't, you don't talk too much about don't work. Don't turn off the mobile. I wish <laughs> no. we don't do that. <laughs> but yeah. we at least try to do stuff like yeah. uh, go for a hike, yeah. uh, take a walk or go yeah. play with soccer or something like that. Mm. So, uh, but as every parent, I have like feel guilty for the hours they spend on iPad or yeah. playing a video game or, mm -hmm. but then I think back to myself as a kid then, okay, I managed even though I had over the average hours of playing games. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, mm. 
teaching them balance as well between yeah, uh, yeah going to the trampoline now or going to the iPad mm. is, is important. Yeah. yeah. So so when you're with the family, you try to focus on that and not feeling guilty about about uh, not being at work and and opposite. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But also we always have. I mean, the, the laptop is is always there. Yeah. So I think that's also something that comes with building a startup mm -hmm. uh, that I sometimes have to flip open and sign something or mm -hmm. get some stuff done. Yeah. Uh, but then that takes five minutes and then I can put it away again and that's mm -hmm. that's done. Yeah. So but that's also been a discussion here at the Tense, especially during Covid, mm -hmm. the always on mentality, yeah. which yeah. I think is important to have a focus on. Mm. I mean, as a leader, should I send that email at 11 mm. o'clock in the evening? Yeah. Or does that put pressure to the employees? That they should respond immediately. Or, or yeah, yeah, or that, okay, mm. I work late hours. Mm. Uh, do I expect them to work late hours? And yeah. then I always bring the aspect with the kids and family in. So mm. I'm telling them, well, I have to log off at three o'clock or four o'clock because I have to attend to soccer or handball or, or mm -hmm. climbing or, or something. Yeah. So I work maybe shorter hours in the daytime, but yeah. then I, I pick it up again at, at nighttime. Yeah, when and the children are asleep. Then. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And if that works for me, that, uh, that's my choice. Yeah. And then they are also, they should be free to kind of mm. flex a bit on how their yeah. daytime kind of works mm. out, I yeah. think. Yeah. It's interesting to say w with the energy you receive in, in work, uh, and because often people think that high stress or a lot of work means something negative, yeah. but in many cases it doesn't. Exactly. So yeah. culture and the team plays a plays a big role. Yeah. Do you think that that, that the uh, camaraderie and 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 the uh, and uh, and the team has played a big role in in getting that energy, getting that positive vibe when you're at the office? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. And the and the discussions and the kind of I think we are really really fortunate at the Tensi with the people because it's not that it's a big group of idealists here but everyone works here because they're passionate about computer games and the change that this as a medium can have on the on the wider industry and mm. and and business and that's something else than, I'm not going to badmouth business systems, but it's something else than going and building a finance system or, mm. or something. Yeah. Probably be passionate about yeah. that. But you can badmouth them if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't, there are customers. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think that's a very unique thing about Atensi. Mm. People, people feel a purpose, I yeah. hope, at least. Mm. And it's something that we've been now that we're growing, um, having lots of focus to on instilling the sense of purpose. Why do you get up in the morning? Yeah. Why do you come to the office? Mm. And, and, and what, do we, what do we do as a company? Because we do really good stuff. Mm. And we make people better yeah. uh, at what they do and uh, feel a sense of mastery, mm. which I think is important. Yeah. Very, very interesting point and, and studies point to the same factor if people are working a lot and it's stressful but they manage stress but, and if they sense a meaning yeah. in, with their work then the total experience is different. So yeah. if you don't sense meaning going to work the experience is, is the opposite. Yeah. yeah, then you have no point in, mm. in showing up. Yeah. yeah. So in the culture you have a lot of emphasis on the meaning and in the recruitment and, and uh, yeah and guided towards that yeah. yeah we try to tell people in the recruitment process that we look for um in norwegian bra folk mm. like uh, good people or yeah. like uh, cultural fit yeah. rather than ticking all the boxes on on the requirements yeah. so i would rather hire a let's say i'm looking for a senior developer i mm -hmm. would rather hire the less experienced with like very good cultural fit to us mm. than the senior, which we think might be yeah. not uh, a good mix into the team. Mm. Are there any personal traits which you think uh, uh, is relevant for that? For example, high in empathy or something like that. Is that, is that something you look, look towards to? 
Yeah, definitely. And especially we have three values as mm -hmm. a company. So you're supposed to be super fast, mm -hmm. people powered and a game changer. Yeah. And I think that really reflects who we are. And, and super fast boils down to like, it's the antithesis to bureaucracy. Mm. So you should kind of put your eye on the target and, and go there and then like move with the with the flow getting things done getting yeah. things done 80 yeah. percent is always the best mm. so don't iterate on the yeah. on the last 20 because it will not make a big difference mm -hmm. so training people to to work in the startup manner although we're now a bigger company mm -hmm. i think is is one of the biggest traits that uh, that we're looking for yeah. that flexibility and yeah. kind of uh, robustness mm. i think in uh, agility almost mm. yeah that's a skill set yeah mm. and now since you uh, grew pretty fast uh, in, in in a short time now you're over 100 people yeah uh, are you afraid that that uh, that the culture might change uh, absolutely yeah. yeah and culture cultural might change because we're not good enough or investing enough in in keeping it tight and keeping, I mean, we have to now broadcast almost. Mm -hmm. So it's not like uh, I or some of us like old timers can be in the kitchen and talking about the intensive way. Mm -hmm. We have to like mass communicate what's the purpose and what's the to to make everybody know the backstory, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the purpose, the values. Mm -hmm. So it's it's challenging. And then also with all of the new markets that we're opening up in. Mm -hmm. So super fast for a Norwegian employee might not be the same for a British or a mm -hmm. American or a German. Yeah. So then bringing across our view on what's super fast, people power, what do we mean? We'd mm -hmm. like everyone to adopt like a Scandinavian view on things, and that might be hard, yeah. I think, in in, in markets where mm -hmm. that's quite exotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. But interesting what you say. So, so in, in other words, you're saying that you truly believe that this this uh, mindset, uh, a part at least Scandinavian, it, it is going to to make Antensi successful. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. And that was also of one course of you the are successful. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> even more, <laughs> more, bigger. more successful. Yeah. yeah, it was also one of the like things that we discussed with our uh, new f uh, investors, mm -hmm. which are American hedge fund. Yeah. So something completely. That sounds scary. That sounds scary, yeah. and it's completely opposite of a Norwegian scale up, uh, I'd say. Yeah. But then they had the same kind of view, and mm -hmm. there's like this. I don't know how to explain it, but Nordic wind mm. uh, almost now yeah. in in the big U.S. markets. Mm -hmm. Like being Scandinavian, we're yeah. trustworthy. Mm -hmm. We are uh, the openness and the kind of quality that we typically bring to the table is recognized mm. and, and being known for. Yeah. So I think now coming into the American market with mm. like a Scandinavian heritage might yeah. actually work good for us yeah, yeah mm. over there yeah so it will be interesting to see yeah. when we get over there yeah back to a little bit mental health and well-being yeah uh, um, mental health uh, the largest health problem we have uh, in the western world and and, and uh, in europe and nordics uh, so many people have depression anxiety and and it has increased uh, also during COVID, and, mm. and it, it's challenging mm. uh, what has been your experience with with employers with mental health problems uh, i think it's um surfaced more mm -hmm. during uh, covid yeah. i recently heard someone talking about a term like mental mental stamina almost mm -hmm. that yeah. our mental stamina has decreased now yeah. that we've been sitting in our home offices and yeah. not being around people and and uh, exposed to groups yeah. so the fact that you now need to build up your like mental stamina and how to socialize and be around mm -hmm. people again is, is quite fascinating. I mean, the first days I was back at the office here mm -hmm. after one and a half years at home, yeah. it was quite exhausting. Yeah. And that was kind of, I, I, I sat home and I was trying to like reflect on why, mm -hmm. because as I said earlier, I mm -hmm. typically energize from a day at the office. Yeah. 
but I was completely wasted when mm. I got back. Yeah. And I was like, it was the noise and it was, you know, we've hired so many people. I had, I felt I had to recognize the names mm. of everyone and yeah. they didn't recognize me. So there was no need for me needing yes. to know who they were as well. So then picking up on all that and mm. just um, being used to being around people. Mm. Uh, and, and for me then getting energy for that felt so exhausted then mm. I could just imagine how people that would uh, just getting over the doorstep mm. in the morning feel yeah. they would probably uh, yeah have a hard time mm. even going to the office and then uh, yeah. meeting people again and, and yeah sitting in meetings and mm. you have to like adopt a new normal uh, two things yeah. so i think it's it's definitely surfaced mm -hmm. it's something that we've tried to be proactive on and mm -hmm. kind of um we have a people and culture team that has been very proactive uh, reached out to people and also we've done lots of these what we call pulse surveys yeah. just basically a score from one to ten yeah. how do you feel yeah. um, and are you comfortable with the work situation mm. is there anything we can do yeah so yeah very very interesting and, and good to hear both both in, in uh, checking out the information how, how it is both in talks but also using other instruments and mm. checking in on people how, checking in on people how people are doing yeah, yeah. So, so do you think uh, do you think the stigma is less now in the tech industry uh, um, about mental problems? Do you think it's changing that people are more open about if they have depression or anxiety or something something is um, going on? I'm not sure that we're quite there to no. be honest, um, because it's still something that's not necessarily addressed in the like wider for us or like talked about openly mm. it's still something that is we we talk to the employees or like handle that on a one-to-one -one basis mm. so um i think still there is a way to go in yeah. like making this yeah everyday topic or yeah. or something um yeah. to to come forward with and I think that if people speak up about mm. like role models like yeah. senior people or mm. or celebrities or whatnot um, speak up about that that's definitely something to to help mm. uh, normalize the whole thing yeah. because I think there's still a way to go mm. on that yeah. yeah going back to to now now yourself in the new role uh, mm. It, this doesn't seem that it affected you much to change the title. It's the same. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the yeah. same life quality, a little bit different roles. So, yeah. are, are you happy with that? That that it's not affecting you at all. That you're not the CEO anymore, and you're the CTO, and and the, that's fine. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as a, I think the the view on that is more external mm -hmm. rather than than internal, and that's yeah. something we discussed. I yeah. mean. Um, didn't change so much for me personally yeah. and my kind of work enjoyment yeah. did not change if anything it become became clearer okay these are my core responsibilities yeah. and these this is what i now do mm -hmm. like technology operations compliance all yeah. of that stuff mm -hmm. but um we went through like a discussion of the external facing part because um it's the biggest dream for a lot of people to be the CEO, to mm. be the like uh, top manager of mm. a scale up like this. Yeah. And I was thinking or yeah, discussing um, how would people, is this like a demotion mm. almost? Because yeah. uh, I've been CEO, co-CEO, CEO again, yeah. and then I go to CTO, COO. Mm. And from an external point, if you think LinkedIn, yeah. so uh, what would seems it seems like you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you go up and then <laughs> exactly. go to the side again. Yeah. So I was like, so many of my like the ones I went to university with, yeah. or like that's uh, working their way upwards, yeah. would think, my God, she let go of the CEO title yeah. and and she now is a CTO, COO. I mean, yeah. what's up with that? Yeah. Um, but I. And of course, I see that mm. it could uh, need a story. So mm. why did I 
do yeah. that, but for the company mm -hmm. and for, I think everyone in the company, this was clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was clear what Trun's position was, what my position was, what mm -hmm. our roles and responsibilities yeah. was. Yeah. And as we grew, it, we spent the first two minutes of every meeting explaining why we had a co-CEO setup. Mm -hmm. So it was like, but yeah. so we're co CEOs yeah, yeah. and and, yeah. and in new markets, it's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we try to say, well, SAP has, uh, and you know, some of the bigger yes. businesses have yeah. this model. Mm. So, but then yeah. we wanted to just put the responsibility in one place. Yeah. Trun is the CEO, he mm -hmm. was also the founder. Yeah. Uh, my spikes are mm. in operations, technology, strategy, mm. that part. And then uh, let's run with that. Yeah. And then as long as I'm confident in, in that's kind of my core areas, then mm. uh, I can always explain to the, <laughs> to the QS people why kind of the, the career path looks a bit mm. off, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and looking into the future now, exciting times for, for, for the company and, and new challenges. What do you what do you think is going to be the the largest challenges for 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 the company now in the next years? It will definitely be to as we touched upon like maintaining the culture mm -hmm. among so many new locations and so many new employees. Yeah. So how can we make everyone feel like an intensive, super fast people power game changer mm -hmm. kind of? Uh, uh, person and, mm. and to have the same kind of feeling of purpose that we do here in Oslo when where mm. everybody sits together yeah. so 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 that will be super challenging but also to hire enough people um, and there will be hits and misses mm. and then spotting the the successes and then um, learn from that mm. in order to recruit better yeah but it's also quite challenging because i mean the investors the management there's lots of people here excited about the growth journey mm -hmm. but uh, i think there's also quite a few who are thinking well we're 150 isn't isn't that enough aren't we like a yeah. bunch of happy people doing great stuff earning mm. lots of money yeah. uh, why the rush or mm. why the need for this in super scale uh, timeline. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also, I mean, people want, people probably will miss being that small mm -hmm. startup. I even miss it myself yeah. uh, from time to time, being 10 people in startup lab and uh, mm. you knew what everybody would had for dinner the, the previous <laughs> day. I mean, it's something yeah. else, yeah. 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 And now I can suddenly, Oh, where's this and that guy? No, he's on paternity leave. What? He had a baby? So yeah. it's like yeah. you miss that touch uh, yeah. with people. Mm. So I think that's also a big risk gonna, gonna that people yeah. uh, mm. feel that we're yeah. moving too fast or becoming too big mm. too soon. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in, your, in your private life, uh, as a mom, or as a partner, uh, playing soccer as well, okay, occasionally, what do you think are going to be the challenges there, like in the next years? <sighs> Um, you know, going into COVID, I felt a ease in having to travel less. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy yeah. visiting our London office, going to the US, uh, everything. Mm. Uh, my daughter told me quite direct after a period of COVID that, Mom, I think it's so good that you're so much more at home. Yeah. Because I went to London maybe every other month or, mm. or so. Yeah. So um, keeping the balance between being at home mm -hmm. and then keeping up with the offices uh, around the world will yeah. be a challenge. Yeah. So combining family life and, and travel. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you so, think about bringing the kids and the husband? With yeah, you yeah. Time? yeah, absolutely. And my daughter has a rain check on a London trip <laughs> that she keeps on reminding me. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So, so that will be, mm -hmm. but then my, my husband is running another startup. He can't be away for, uh -huh. for more than a day or two. Yeah. So uh, they are in even earlier phase than, mm -hmm. uh, than a tendency. So, uh, so that's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. And then I think one thing I, I 
dabble about uh, often now is when you lose that feeling of having to know everybody mm-hmm. in the in the company. Yeah. So knowing the first name, the position, the the CV of all the employees, at some point you don't. Yeah, you have to let that go. You have to point. let that yeah. go. Mm-hmm. And you have to get used to asking, oh, so who are you again? And, and where do you work? And what yeah. have you done? Kind of. Mm. Is, uh, that's something I have quite mixed feelings uh, yeah. about because you feel so ownership and responsible for the team. Mm. But I, I think that's around the corner and yeah. any, any day now. Yeah. Mm. So uh, looking back on your life, uh, are there any things would you wanna, would you, uh, would you could change? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, if there's one thing in like the career life I could would change, it's having a few years abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, either as an exchange student or yeah. I, I worked on like projects abroad, yeah. but to live in a different country or yeah. to, uh, yeah. To Something take... you would have li- liked to do. Yeah, yeah, that I would have done. Yeah. What uh, country? Any country, <laughs> almost. <laughs> any country. Yeah. <laughs> so I traveled quite a bit, yeah. but I've, um, you know, either Asia, like Singapore or China, mm-hmm. like in Southeast Asia. U.S. I've never been to South Africa. No, so, n- not South Africa either, but South America. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Some of those areas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But but you would not change the cat decision. You became a cat woman after you Cats took the... Cats would have yeah. come into the life. Yeah. Also, yeah. I I think if there's one thing on the personal side, I, I uh, think I gave up on on soccer too yeah. soon uh, i stopped when i played in university mm-hmm. and throughout the years that i played real active in like the higher divisions yeah. i always um wanted to have both like the normal teenage life going to parties being part of mm. like everything that they do but also have a really a career within soccer mm. and like play on on the higher teams, national yeah. teams, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I did both. So I didn't do 100% on soccer and yeah. I didn't like do 100% on teenage life. Yeah. So I think looking back now, I think I would have invested more into that soccer yeah. career. Yeah, to try that out if you could get to the highest possible level. Yeah, yeah. 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 But then mm. I would have missed out on all the party and all, yeah, the, uh, all co- the fun stuff. Course. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's easy to say now. <laughs> it's easy to say now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, Annalisa, it's been uh, great having you here. I hope you have enjoyed it as as it's much as I, yeah. I did. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Wish you great luck in the future. Thank you. It will mm. be exciting.